Darren, thanks for having me. And Not apologies problem. for sounding like Phil Mitchell. Um, <laughs> I've had it for a while, but um, Sunday, you beat your old team. Uh, you were fantastic. Um, must be a great day for you. Yeah, it's a great day because it was uh, three points for West Brom, take us up to 39 points now and one away from that magic 40 mark and obviously against my old team, you know, you're desperate to do well and to win the match and um, obviously you still want them to do well but first and foremost priority is West Brom and it was a great three points. You've been brilliant. Uh, a few donuts said he's not going to be the same um, after illness. How good is it to prove him completely wrong? No, it feels good. I had never any doubts. You know, I played a long time ill, so I knew that if I could be well, you know, my performances levels would come back. And I knew coming back, bad performances, people would put it down to, oh, he's been ill, he'll never be the same player. So they were things I was prepared for and willing to accept. But to come to West Brom and to, you know, play all the matches I have and to perform the way I have, it, it's great. But I had no doubts and I had no one to prove wrong. And I just, you know, I play for myself. I've always played for the manager in charge of the team and, and my teammates. and. If they're happy with my performances, then so am I. The gaffer, Tony Pulis, what's he like to work under? Yeah, he's great, very demanding, you yeah. know, old school. Says it as it is, you know, um, there's no hiding places with the manager and he demands a lot from everyone. But I've enjoyed that, I'm used to that. And, you know, off the pitch, he's a great guy, though, he, yeah, off the pitch is, but he's very demanding. But as soon as you come off it, you know, he's asking how your family are, takes a keen interest in how you are and, and, and things like that. So you, you can't ask for it any other way, really. Obviously, you worked under Sir Alex for 20 years. How does a Tony Pulis telling off compare to a Sir Alex telling off? Very similar, but I think that... Scary. Yeah, scary, yeah. But I think that... So I, I went joined United when I was 15, so Sir Alex almost has that, you know, you've been a little a young lad and yeah. you almost have that, that, you know, it's being told off by your dad. And everyone said they've my dad anyway, so, you know, it's all part and parcel of it. But, um, no, it's, it's a little bit different when you're a little bit older and you, and you come to the club as captain, you know what I mean? Um, you maybe stand up for yourself a little bit more. And I think that's probably the only thing that I've probably gained a little bit of experience. Have either of them ever made you cry? No. <laughs> um, everyone talks about Sir Alex saying like the hair dryer and all that. Wasn't he like super calm during team talks? Super calm, super relaxed, believed in his players, and went and you know, did his tactics, did his team talks. And you didn't know what you were going to get, you know, tell fantastic stories about maybe his childhood or an ex team or a certain player or something, just a calming influence. Did his team talk, pinpointed weaknesses in the opposition, and then sat in the corner with a cup of tea and read the programme and just so relaxed and that transcended to the players. And at half time, sometimes our biggest rollickings or hair dryers came when maybe we were winning. Really? And we'd, we were almost maybe being complacent. You know, at times we were losing, it was the opposite effect. He was calming and calmed everyone down, stuck to a few simple tactics on the board and said, that's how we'll get back into the match and go and do it. You know, so he was just a master of the uncertainty. You didn't know what you were going to get. Your passing is unbelievable. <laughs> Touch me. Um, do you think it was underappreciated at Old Trafford because you were playing alongside Skulls and Roy Keane? Yeah, maybe a little bit, yeah. I think I was a, a, a decent passer, ball always coming through, but that was what I was judged against. My performances were judged against Keenan Scholes and that's that's a tough, you know, it's tough to live up to because probably two of the best midfielders ever in the Premier League, probably in Europe. Best player you played with? It's those two, but I probably Paul Scholes on ability. Roy Keane had the, all the other attributes, a leader, determined, but his passing and f ability was underrated, but Paul Scholes is the most complete footballer. Would you say that's Roy Keane's face? No. <laughs> <laughs> When you were at Man United, you used to go with the fans and watch the game. What sort of fan were you? You giving it large? <laughs> yeah, it was proper. Yeah, Green Street giving it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just, um, I'd missed football. I was out for a while and I wanted to go. And Man United, the way fans are special. They're good. They're very good. And I wanted to, I wanted to join them. And I wanted to, to experience a derby and amongst the fans. No, I, I tried to keep my head down, obviously. And try not to try to go unnoticed and, and things like that. How can Darren Fletcher go unnoticed? <laughs> no, quite easily. Yeah, it's, it's not really? easy. Really? Yeah, put a hood up and and I went unnoticed pretty much until near the end. You've won everything in club football. That's amazing. But didn't you have to give Sir Alex a nudge to get your League Cup medal? I did. Yeah. 
we'd won three League Cups while I was at United. The first one I'd played every round and got dropped for the final, wasn't even in the squad. Then we played Tottenham in the final and we had a big Champions League game on the Wednesday and the manager rested me, Wayne Rooney, Berbatov and a few players because of that game, so I didn't get a medal that time. So it was the one medal I needed to complete the set. So we got to the final against Aston Villa and he pulled me to the side and says, I'm thinking of resting you. And I said, Gaffer, you can't, you can't do it again. It's the one medal I need. And he's like, oh, for God's sake, you're joking. I was like, yeah, he said, you've dropped me twice now. I need this medal to complete the set. And he let me play and thankfully we won. And that was the last medal I needed. And yeah, it was a good moment. That was brilliant, though, not it? Where'd you keep all your medals? Um, they're in a plastic bag in my kid's room. Plastic bag? Yeah, they play like... You are keeping it real, aren't you? They, they, well, they like playing with them. They go in the room and like pretend they've won the Champions League or the Premier League and present each other with medals, so... That is mega. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a plastic bag, Champions yeah, League, I think it's an iPhone shop bag or something like that. Oh, yeah. You're the man. <laughs> <laughs>